Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're getting into a series of studies on present truth in Deuteronomy. Today, the everlasting covenant. It's an exciting topic. It's more than just a legal contract. You are invited to become part of the family of God. So I'm glad you joined us for Hope Sabbath School today. Welcome and welcome to the team. And that's our team here in the studio. Good to see you. And we've got some remote team members. I want to welcome Glennie from Florida. Glennie, good to see you on Hope Sabbath School today. And Jonathan uh, from right here in Maryland. Jonathan, great to have you with us. You know, we've got a lot of feedback that the uh, remote participants are a great, uh, what would you say, adjustment. Asset. Because we can bring in Puya from Hawaii, we can bring in Shana from Maine, and we're happy to have Glennie and Jonathan with us today. Talking about being uh, spread out, we've got Hope Sabbath School members all around the world. Here's a note from William in Kenya. We have a lot of Hope Sabbath School members in Kenya. I'm taking this opportunity to thank you for your effort and hope in Christ and His Word as we share the Word every week. I write to thank you for all the Hope Sabbath School series. They've helped me to understand the Bible. Your in-depth study has also enabled me to be a good teacher in my local church. Amen. God bless you all. Well, William, thanks for writing to us from Kenya. That's our greatest joy when it's multiplied, right? Mm. You can download the outline that we use. Just go to hopetv.org slash hopess. Tens of thousands of downloads. You can make a copy for everyone in your class. It's a great way to have an interactive class together. Oh, we've got Adriana from British Columbia. Well, we don't have anyone from BC on our team today. But uh, hello, Hope Sabbath School. Hello. Adriana writes and says, Thank you for Hope Sabbath School. My mother and I enjoy watching your program. We are encouraged and blessed. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist church member in British Columbia, and I thank God for your ministry. Amen. 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 Well, thanks so much for writing to us, Adriana. Well, here's one of those handwritten notes again. This is from a donor in Kansas in the United States of America. That's kind of the heartland, isn't it? Kansas. It says, and it's written from, from a donor, I appreciate your Gideon's Band. Well, that's our group here, right? But I look forward to the time when the whole army can participate. Mm -hmm. Well, you know who you are writing to us. You've got also now our remote team members, so we've, we've expanded. And even better, when we can gather together at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And a donation of $5,000 mm -hmm. to support the ministry of Hope Sabbath School. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Thank you, Kansas. You know who you are, and thanks to each one of you, especially at this time of the year, you say, is there something I can do to make an impact for the kingdom? Well, we want to invite you to be a part of this ministry. You can go to hopetv.org slash donate, or just go to our webpage. You'll see a little button that you can click on, and thank you for partnering with us. Here's a note from Libe in Cameroon. Libe. And Libe writes and says, My family is blessed every Sabbath morning as we study with you. By the way, what's the primary lang language in Cameroon? Mm -hmm. Anybody know? Is it French? It's French. That's right, Sabina. I was sure someone was going to say Cameroonian or something. <laughs> it's French. I am particularly blessed as now I am a Sabbath school leader in our church. Wow. Mm -hmm. May the Lord God bless His Word through Hope Channel to touch others just like it touched me, changed my life, and made me able to speak about Jesus with boldness. Amen. 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 <laughs> I want to meet that brother. Amen. Thanks for writing to us from Cameroon. That's exciting that you are now uh, teaching the Word of God and you're a first-hand witness for Jesus. Well, we've got one last note here from uh, Tim writing from California in the United States of America. And Tim writes and says, Thank you so much for Hope Sabbath School. Watching has been an inspiration to my family. Mm -hmm. I'd written previously about my children, Jack and Holly. They love the scripture songs, and now they sing at church. Jack 
loves your program, and he wants to be a pastor when he grows up. Amen. Wow. Amen. Attached is a picture. God bless Hope Sabbath School. Well, thank you, Tim, for writing to us from California. And it's exciting to see little ones who are wanting to be part of the miracle, right? Mm. Mm. We're so thankful. In fact, we need you all to help us right now sing our theme song. By the way, if you haven't downloaded it, you can get the sheet music too. Go to hopetv.org slash hopess. You can download the theme song. You can download the sheet music. It's a short song, but powerful for our book on Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear or be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Let's sing it together. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake. Do not fear nor be afraid of them For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you He will not, will not leave you nor forsake you Be strong and of good courage Do not fear nor be afraid of them For the Lord your God, He is the one who Let's pray together. Father in heaven, today as we talk about the everlasting covenant as described in the book of Deuteronomy, I pray you'd help us to see it as so much more than some, some kind of legal agreement, but an invitation to be a part of your family, a part of the royal family of God. I pray that we would catch a glimpse of how much you love us and of your desire for us to to be representatives of your kingdom, even in this present world. So please bless our study today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Deuteronomy chapter 5 is where we're going to start our study today. Nicole, would you begin for us reading in Deuteronomy 5, verses 1 through 3? Sure. The New International Version of Deuteronomy 5, 1 through 3 says, Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. So Deuteronomy has a lot of names. It, its original name is just the words, remember? Mm -hmm. The words, Devarim, the words. But then... Uh, it was also called what? The second giving of the law. law. The second giving of the law. It's where we or get the Deuteronomy, right? Or the repetition of the law. Or the repetition of the law. Thank you. That was another way the Jews would refer to this book. But it's also been called the book of the covenant. So as Nicole just read here, the Lord made a covenant. And by the way, not just with them, with us. but with us. What covenant is uh, Moses talking about? There are many covenants in the Bible, right? Billy, what's the covenant? The Ten Commandments? Well, the Ten Commandments was part of that time. It was the covenant made at Mount Sinai, right? Yes. Yeah. It was that covenant of agreement that was made at Mount Sinai. How, how long ago was that from the time when he's speaking to them now? Or 30 some years? 38 years or so because they wandered for a while, right? And then actually more than 38 years, right? Because they were only three months Help me with the with the, the the numbers here, but I think they were only a few months out of Egypt right. when they got to Sinai, that's right. and that's where the covenant was made. So it's almost it's 40, it's almost 40, 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. 40 years ago that a covenant has been made. Stephanie, can we read about that in Exodus 19, verses 1 through 8? Because Moses is saying, remember that covenant. It wasn't just with them. 40 years ago, but, but it's an everlasting, it's a covenant for us too. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. 
In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. For they had departed from Raphidim and come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all the people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them all these words which the Lord commanded him. Then all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. So here we are, Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And uh, give me another word for covenant, or give me a definition of covenant. Mm -hmm. a covenant is promise. Agreement. A, 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 an agreement, a promise that's made uh, between two consenting parties. You, mm -hmm. you can't make mm -hmm. a covenant with a slave, for example. Mm -hmm. The person has to be free right. to be able to make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, how does this covenant at Sinai, which is now going to be restated, here on the borders of the Promised Land. Mm -hmm. How does it relate to the covenant made to Abraham many generations mm -hmm. before? Yes, Sabina. Well, Abraham, what well, he had received from God in Genesis, is it 12? Genesis 12 was the promise that he was going to be made a great nation and that mm -hmm. through his descendancy, God was going to bless the entire earth. So I, he, I see here a direct correlation because when in God, in revealing this promise he had made to Abraham was now passing it through the following generations that come down to Moses and all this group of people. Uh, he's just trying to give continuity to the promise he had first established with Abraham and even telling them here that also they are going to be a blessing to all nations, making of them a priest, holy nation to bless others. So you're saying it's, a, um, it's actually a working out of the promise made. Jonathan, mm -hmm. could you read for us from Genesis 12? verses 1 through 3. Maybe someone's watching Hope Sabbath School today and they say, well, I've kind of heard of Abraham, but uh, let's read that promise, can we, in, in Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. Sure, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Now the Lord said to Abraham, <clears throat> Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Mm. And of course, Ab Abraham, well, first called Abraham, later Abraham after he has a child, um, he couldn't have fully comprehended how in him all the nations of the earth would be blessed, mm. but how would that happen? Mm. Jesus. Jesus. Through, 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 through Jesus. the Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Through the Messiah, and you remember the family tree of Jesus in the Gospels takes us back, one of them at least, to Abraham, because mm -hmm. he is a descendant. He is the fulfillment of the promise, promise that is made to Abraham. Mm -hmm. So now we are, go back to Deuteronomy 5 with me. Now we're in Deuteronomy where Moses, at the end of his life, how old is Moses now? Anybody remember? Glennie, how old's Moses when he's right on the border of the Promised Land? Do you remember? 120? Yes, he's an old man, for sure. 120 <laughs> years old. He's been with them 40 years, and he's going to restate the covenant that was made. Let's take a look at it together, and I'm going to ask uh, Billy if you'd read from Deuteronomy 5, verses 4 through 11, and then, Sabina, I'm going to ask you to pick up in verse 12 and read down through verse 22. I'd like you to listen very carefully because 
it's not exactly the same wording as was given in Exodus. So let's pick up the story in um, Deuteronomy 5, verses 4 through 11. Sure, and I'll be reading from the uh, NIV. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. And at that time, I stood between the Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord, because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses His name. All right, so we've started actually going through the Ten Commandments, right? And mm -hmm. we got mm -hmm. to the Third, third Commandment. Third. Yes. Yes. Do you see any difference so far between what was said in Exodus and what is being restated here by Moses? Anybody? Any changes? Everybody's looking. No. There aren't changes in the commandments, but there are some changes in the, the preamble to it, right? Uh, he gives a little more explanation of, of how they've been delivered, mm -hmm. okay? Yes, but, but now we're going to go on, Sabina, if you could take us verses 12 through 22, mm -hmm. and we are going to see a change in wording. Okay, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Deuteronomy 5, from 12 to 22. And the word of the Lord says, Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. Hmm. And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, his male servant, his female servant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly in the mountain from the midst of the fire, the cloud and the thick darkness, with a loud voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. Mm -hmm. So, do you see any changes there? Yes. Yes, Nicole. Well, in the fourth commandment, um, in, in the prior... Uh, in Exodus, it says, remember the Sabbath day. Here it says, observe the Sabbath day. It's so let's just unpack that first, sure. if we can. Mm -hmm. uh, does he still want us to remember it? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he uses a different word, to observe or to keep? Mm -hmm. You say, I don't know, I'm going to ask him. Jonathan, why do you think they changed? Here Moses uses a different word. We, I've always heard since I was little, remember was important because he didn't want us to forget. Why do you think in the restatement he uses a different word and says, observe the Sabbath to keep it holy? Yeah. yeah, because the first time they had been going for centuries and many of them had forgotten as they were in Egypt as slaves. And so they needed to be reminded to remember, whereas now uh, they needed to hold on to it to keep it because they um, had it, but maybe it was easy to let go of it. 
So you don't have any problem with the fact that, that he's uh, kind of restating that um, in terms of the no, context in which they live now? Yeah, no, I think he's just uh, capturing maybe a deeper meaning for them in, in the current context. And now they're, I mean, he states, because I am the one who brought you out of Egypt. So God, we rest in him as our savior from uh, Egypt, from as our creator, and just kind of flushing it out for them. All right. Now, Nicole, I interrupted you, uh, but, but you're going to say something else, because in addition to the remember being changed to observe, the reason is there. for mm -hmm. Sabbath should I say is different or another reason is given? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Because it speaks not about for in six days the Lord made, mm -hmm. right. but it says you were slaves in Egypt. Right. So what do you think about that? Billy, could we say, oh, well, then obviously this is just for the Jews and their descendants who were slaves in Egypt and it's not for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, well, I think they, they forgot that they were slaves. Um, and you can say that, you know, sometimes when you forget your past, you know, you don't appreciate your present. And I think for them, mm -hmm. uh, uh, forgetting that they were slaves, uh, that uh, takes away from them relating to people who, who are slaves and how they treat them. Uh, so God was recalibrating them that they, they, did, they did not come from a royal lineage in the sense where um, they were daughters and sons of kings, uh, but they were slaves and that, that they should be humble about their, um, where they ca came from so that they can have, I guess, a better appreciation about those who are less fortunate than them. It's interesting in this series, we've talked about remembering how God has led us and he did lead them out of slavery, right, mm -hmm. Sabina? Yeah, I'm thinking also of your question in, um, you know, verse three says, uh, Deuteronomy 5, 3 says, the Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive, so I think this makes clear also that the covenant, the promise, as you were asking, was not just for th those people in that time. He's making clear that it applies also uh, to, to the people of this context here. Um, so let me come back to, is this different uh, from remembering our Creator, or is this showing like many dimensions of, of Sabbath? It's also a sign of our deliverance because we've all been in bondage to something, right? That's right? What do you think, Nicole? I mean, I think it's it's not different than remembering our Creator, but I think for me when I read this text, I think it's more of an action word. Observe the Sabbath. Mm. Not only should you rest, but your manservant <laughs> should rest also. And I think mm -hmm. it gives more, um, more body to the commandment that says, it's not just remembering your Creator, but bring others around you into the creation also of the Sabbath mm -hmm. and enjoy it with them. All right. Stephanie, you want to add to that? What about the person who says, well, clearly here, the Sabbath is to remember when you and your forefathers were slaves in Egypt. That's speaking about the children of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it's obviously not for us. So I would parallel that slave in Egypt with those of us who have been enslaved to sin. And each of us have had that in our experience. And I just think of, it made me think of um, 1 Peter 2, where... Um, He's speaking, sometimes you, at one time, you were disobedient. Um, Would you like to read that for yes. us? Apparently the Holy Spirit led you there. So where, where are you going to read from? First Peter chapter two. Okay. And um, verse nine. Okay, first Peter two, verse nine. This is the and royal verse priesthood, 10. right? Yes. Nine and 10? Nine and 10. All right, first Peter chapter two, two. verses nine and 10. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And I... I think of this as maybe being re the first version in Exodus was remember uh, it was the creation story, but now we're looking at recreation. So we've been in darkness. That's we've been in a life of sin, and He's called us out of the darkness. Mm -hmm. He's recreated us. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I definitely want to hold on to the fact that. This restatement of another reason why the Sabbath is so precious, mm -hmm. it's a symbol of 
salvation mm. yes. doesn't mean it's not a symbol of creation. Mm. Correct. Because right. actually that goes all the way back to Genesis, right? Exactly. So it's for all of us. Travis? I, would, I was just going to basically say the same point as this Paul in the New Testament uses this, um, this theology, this kind of uh, uh, idea that we become a new creation when we're in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. and that we're, we're no longer slaves to sin. And so, so the Sabbath has become to me um, this um, time to remember and to observe because God is the one who sanctifies me, Ezekiel 20, 12. I gave it to you that you might know that I'm the Lord who sanctifies you being cleansed from sin, mm -hmm. being a new creation in Jesus. Even King David said, create in me a clean heart because all of us need to be, uh, become a new creation in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to come to Moses and Glennie, I'm going to ask you to read from Deuteronomy 29, 9 through 15. We're on the borders of the promised land. As we said earlier, Moses is 120. He's not going to go in, but these are the words, right? These are the final words he's going to share with them. And he's reminding them about the covenant that God made. Mm. And it's not just for them, but it's for, for, us. Us. It's for us. Why does he restate it? Glenny, let's, let's hear uh, Moses' words in Deuteronomy 29, verses 9 through 15. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, Therefore keep the words of this covenant, and do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. All of you stand today before the Lord your God, your leaders and your tribes and your elders, your officers, all the men of Israel, your little ones and your wives, also the strangers who is in your camp, from the one who cuts your wood to the one who draws your water, that you may enter in the coven into the covenant with the Lord your God and into his oath, which the Lord your God makes with you today, that he may establish you today as a people for himself, that he may be God to you, just as he has spoken to you, and just as he has sworn to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I make this covenant and this oath not with you alone, but with him who stands here with us today before the Lord our God, as well as with him who is not here with us today. So how would you summarize? Why, why is he repeating it? What's, what's the burden on his heart? He wants them that they keep it. Is it just that they would keep it? What, what, what's driving him, Jonathan? It. What's driving him to say, don't forget this? I think he's trying to really um, invest in them the importance of this and how much it means to him as, as he is established with the generations before them and means to bless the world that in order for them to do that, they need to make it themselves, their own covenant. And so that God can use them as this kingdom of priests and this witness and an invitation to the rest of the world to look to the God of heaven. I, I think that's the second half of it, Jonathan, and it's mm -hmm. important. But I'd like to take the word bless, which you talked about, to bless the world. Mm -hmm. Travis, mm -hmm. can you finish my sentence? You wanted to bless them. He wanted to bless exactly. them. Mm -hmm. yes. He's saying to them, like we heard in a previous study, where they turn back, mm -hmm. don't miss out on the blessing mm -hmm. yes. that I want to give you. Right. Yes. And, 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 and again, I sense the passion in his heart because of a couple of verses. Um, Galeni, uh, could you read for us uh, from, what was the verse came to mind? Deuteronomy 4, verse 9. And then, Travis, could you read Deuteronomy 4, verse 23? Um, there's this, there's this sense of urgency in this aged prophet's heart. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want you to miss the blessing. Mm -hmm. Lenny, what do you read in Deuteronomy 4, verse 9? Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And then Travis, same chapter 4, verse 23. Verse 23, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. So you say, Derek, he already said, take heed that you don't forget. And now in just a few seconds later, he's saying it again. Mm -hmm. What do you hear? 
Please. Please. <laughs> Please don't forget. Right. It's kind of like highlighting yeah. in a yellow highlighter, yeah. right, Sabina? Yeah. And in, in a sense, it's a recognition that they had choices to be done, you know, yes. Pastor Derek. They, they have chosen for death, and now they had to choose for life. And I see Mo Moses trying to encourage them to propel them as close as possible to the right choice. He cannot choose for them. God cannot cho choose, choose for us either, but he can inform them that they are going to prosper, they are going to be blessed, they are going to be a blessing. Mm. So I find that in this repetition, he just wanted to inculcate in them and to help them in the moment when the decision comes that they are going to be inclined to the right and mm. to choose life. And like Travis said, he wants to bless them. And like Billy said, he wants to bless others through them. And if God wants to bless us as his children and bless others through us, what might cause us to forget? Hmm. <laughs> because if it wasn't a danger, he wouldn't be saying, don't forget, don't forget. Yeah. What are some things that might cause us to forget the covenant mm -hmm. that God's made, not just with them, with us. but also with us, right? Let, let's think of some. Nicole? Our own desires and amb ambitions that are separate from what God wants for us. So we were like, well, this is God's plan, but this is my plan. Correct. And sometimes we try to be religious and say, God, this is my plan. Please bless it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the angels go, where did you get that? <laughs> right. That's mm -hmm. that's not the plan. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. OK, so my own desires, Billy, what else could it cause us to forget? Sometimes the need to look like other people, to assimilate to other people, mm -hmm. we don't like to be different. And God was calling them to be different for a special purpose to, to bless them. But they were uncomfortable with that. They wanted to look like the other nations. Well, at least there was that threat mm -hmm. to look like the other nations. So that could have been a, a reason where, where Moses had to encourage them not to forget. Mm -hmm. And an example of that would be in Exodus, is it 32? Why did they make a golden calf at the, at the mm. base of Mount Sinai and dance naked around it? What was that all about? That's what they had learned from. That's what they'd they seen learned. happening mm -hmm. back in pagan Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. exactly. So, yeah, this pressure to um, fit in yeah. mm -hmm. with the new culture. Yes, Sabina. And I'm thinking of the fact that now they have been wandering in the desert for those many years. Eventually, they are going to pass the promised land. And they were going to have new interactions with people that were, again, like they had interactions in Egypt, that had other gods that they were worshiping. So I see also, just going along with Billy was saying, that God was concerned with that potentially they are going to make bad associations. And again, they would fall in the same scene they had fallen before. Sure. Glennie. Mm. I think another issue is being comfortable. Sometimes when we are in the in our comfort zone, we forget uh, to be connected with God. Like you see, the church was thriving often during persecution, or even the Israelites. Whenever something bad happened, that's when they're like, "God, we'll do whatever you want us to do." But when things were, you know, getting stabilized, they just forgot that God was in the picture. I think we'll find you right in Deuteronomy that he talks about when you come into the land and you you mm -hmm. prosper. Mm -hmm. Yes. Take care lest you forget. Yeah. Yeah. Stephanie? I was thinking about those things that we see and we hear because that seems so tangible to us that it could override the reality of who God is. Mm -hmm. And so our feelings and emotions take over instead of mm. the reality of who God is. Yeah. Mm. Travis, in a previous study, you said, I want to choose to believe God's word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than the words of people around me, right? I was just thinking of Peter when Jesus told him that he'd prayed that his faith from it would not fail. And he said, Lord, I'm ready. He was overconfident. Mm. And then later on in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, watch and pray, because he mm. said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I'm thinking of the children of Israel. That w that's what he's saying. Watch, be diligent, mm. be because there's a, there's a devil out there. There's an adversary, mm. and he's going to try to lead you away from the, the covenant promises of God. Mm -hmm. I, it, as soon as uh, Travis said, all oh, you know, um, Peter no, no, not going to bow down, I, I, I thought of the children of Israel saying, well, everything he said will do, yeah. we, you know, without, we without recognizing we, how intense yeah. the conflict would be to compromise yeah. Yeah. and to try to fit in. Sabina? Yeah, and one other element I'm thinking, Pastor Derek, it's impatience. 
we see that these people here, they were impatient at various moments while they were wandering in the desert. So I think this can also draw us away from God's mm. covenant because mm. His timing is usually different than ours. Mm. And we need to bear with that and wait upon His rescue. And sometimes we're just not eager and not willing, not open. Mm. And part of this uh, covenant, this uh, everlasting covenant, was not just their salvation, but what God wanted to do through them. Mm. So, Jonathan, could you take us to Deuteronomy chapter 18 and look at verse 9 uh, and then verses 10 through 14. I'll have you read all of those, but if you could stop after verse 9 and we'll comment and then look at 10 through 14 for us. All right. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Verse 9. <clears throat> when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, hmm. you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. Hmm. So why not? Well, you say it's obvious, but help me out. <laughs> I want you, people of God, hmm. to be different hmm. from the people around you. Why? Glennie, why does he want us to be different? It's like, oh God, why do I have to be, you know, to use Peter, right? A peculiar people, right? Mm. Why? Well, you see, the people that are that were around, the pagans were doing, sacrificing children, doing crazy things like this, and God wanted, God wasn't showing partiality. Some people think, oh, this is some partiality thing he's doing, but he entrusted them with truths so they can be an example of what it looks like to be a, to be a child of God to the rest of the world. So it was a big res responsibility they had. Well, let's keep reading, Jonathan, if you would, verses 10 through 14 of Deuteronomy 18. He's used the word abominable, so we get the idea there's some bad things out there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, read on for us, if you would, in Deuteronomy 18, verses 10 through 14. All right. <clears throat> there shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering, Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations, which are, are you are about to dispossess, listen to fortune tellers and to diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I'm listening to that. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. I'm saying, well, God didn't leave it up to their imagination what was abominable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. True. right? True. Very specific. Mm -hmm. I mean, really? Do you think that they could have degenerated to talk, trying to talk to the dead mm -hmm. and yes. you really think that that could happen to them? Yes. Can you think of someone in the history of <laughs> the children of Israel that that happened to, Nicole? King Saul. King Saul mm -hmm. goes talking to a witch, yeah. even though the Bible's clear mm -hmm. that when we die, we sleep until the resurrection. He, he wants to try to talk to Samuel. a dead and some <laughs> lying spirit comes up mm -hmm. claiming mm -hmm. to be Samuel the prophet, right? Yeah, yeah. So how in the world is it possible that knowing all the truth that they could fall into the abominations of the nations around them? Yeah. How, how can that happen? Anybody? What do you think, Nicole? Well, Sabina used a word earlier that I think is very key. It's impatience. We as humans get very impatient with God, and so we try and find ways to get answers to things before we need to know them. So that's why I can see you falling into sorcery and, and truth tellers and all this other stuff, because we just don't want to wait on the Lord to lead our path the way that He wants us to go. All right, so we might be impatient and instead of waiting on God's Word. We try to take it from someone else, mm -hmm. Sabina? Pastor Derek, I've been recently doing my devotionals in the book of John. And one thing that I've noted, you know, when Jesus was, was being questioned by the Pharisees and uh, there is an event in which Nicodemus, who had already had a conversation with Jesus and who happened to be a Pharisee, he turns to the others and say, hey, instead of being so prompt in judging, why don't you observe what they are doing, uh, what he's doing and also what he's saying? And 
you know, just knowing things or saying things is not enough. We need also to have them in practice. Mm. And, that's, uh, and that's something that we see recurring again with Jesus in the New Testament. And here I can turn back to this event and think the same. It's not enough to know. They may have as much knowledge as they can, but conversion is a, a, a heart issue. That's right. It's not just a mental issue. It's important to have the knowledge. It will help you in your development if, of your relationship and your walk with God. But if you are truly not surrendered in your heart, it's, it's useless. So let's say that covenant relationship was not just for the people at Sinai and not just for the people about to enter the promised land, mm -hmm. but it's a covenant relationship with us too. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to be distinct Hmm. from the pagan culture around us. Hmm. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Now, we're not talking about salvation here. We're saved by grace through faith, right? Mm -hmm. You can't earn the love of God. You can accept His saving love, right? Mm -hmm. but, but this holiness is for what reason? Mm -hmm. To glorify God. It's mm -hmm. to glorify God and point people to Him, yes, right? Yes. So let's get very practical now. Mm. What <laughs> we may get into trouble, but <laughs> what are some compromises that we may feel pushed to make mm. in our secular, atheistic, or even anti theistic culture mm. to just kind of fit in? Mm. And, and Moses would be saying, Don't forget the covenant, you are a chosen people, mm. right? Mm. You're to declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness, your Creator and your Redeemer. Mm. What, what, what are some areas we might be pressured to compromise, mm. Billy? Mm. I think, well, if you're a student, uh, you might be pressured to uh, cheat. Everybody's cheating. Yeah, mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. because everybody's cheating, so you feel like, well, you know, that's one way to get ahead. Um, if, you, if you're in the workforce, you might be tempted to bribe, because everybody's bribing, then I need to bribe. Mm. And that, that yeah, that's not right, basically, because the value is put on self-preservation instead of um, glorifying God. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to ask you a question, Glennie. As a young adult, young, young, young adult, just getting started with your professional life, what are some pressures that you feel that might be in the culture around you that could push you away from saying, no, I'm, I'm a peculiar treasure, I'm... I'm I have a covenant relationship with God that maybe people around me don't even understand. Mm. You know, I mean, at least in the context of my life right now, I see that often um, in the Christian circles, it feels like it, it's a good thing to be busy and doing good things. And often we don't have that relationship, that one-on-one -on -one connection with God. So at the expense of having that communion with personal relationship with God, we do a lot of you know, ministry and good stuff, but I don't know if that can answer your question or if that makes sense. Um, well, I think it does because it's easy to have a second-hand relationship with God right. when what we need is a personal experience mm -hmm. with God, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. So there's like a form of godliness, you know, mm. outside you seem to be um, godly and holy and this and that, but not really having that true conversion or true connection with, with God. Mm. I think that's, that's an obstacle as well, besides the obvious things like eating and uh, bribing, yeah. which is bad as well. And promiscuity and uh, pornography on the internet and... Uh, mm. Uh, what, it, what is it when you're addicted to stuff? Work up, well, mm. oh, I oh. see, hoarding things. Yeah, hoarding things, yeah. you know, buying things we don't need Materialism. with money we don't have to impress mm. people we, we don't, don't like, mm. you know, <laughs> and, and we can buy into the same True. culture, even mm. though we know as children of the king that we're not going to take any of that stuff with mm. us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. right? It's so easy to be affected, mm -hmm. and God's calling his covenant people not just back then at Sinai, not just mm -hmm. as they're about to enter the promised land, but, but today mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. distinctive yeah. from the secular world. Yeah. Sabina? I think there is great temptation to be pursuing and just chasing after material things, you know, Pastor Derek. We are in this world where everything is about image, about what you possess, about 
um, not who you are in your heart, but what you can show in your outward appearance. So I think in everywhere, in the choice of the work you are going to do, how you are going to be enjoying, you know, your free hours, everything is calling people just to, to show off, right? Mm -hmm. To show an image in social media, show an image of who they are not truly in their hearts. And there, I think there is a temptation to value more the superficial things than the things that mm -hmm. matter to God. Uh, and to be under this agenda of death instead of the agenda of life mm -hmm. eternal, of things that are going to be eternal, that are not going to perish. Uh, so just image, materialism. Yeah, Jonathan. Yeah, I think there's there's a temptation to let some of the, um, for lack of a better word, political things affect our uh, witness our uh, authenticity in our relationship with God and maybe pull us to something other than truly relying on him and truly being, um, yeah, authentically fully committed and, and, and reliant upon God's power rather than man's power. So how do we avoid that? We go, boy, those children of Israel, you know, Moses really needed to remind them. And uh, we're saying today, Billy, he needs to remind us too, mm -hmm. right? Remember that you are covenant people of God. Mm -hmm. You are, to use Peter's words, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, right? Yeah. A holy nation mm -hmm. to declare his praises. Yeah. How do, Billy, how do we avoid that, you know, one person called it creeping compromise? Mm. Yeah. Creeping, mm. you know, it just kind of sneaks up on you. Yeah. And pretty soon we can talk, dress, eat, Act. socialize, entertain, like people who don't even know there's a God in heaven. Right. I, well, I think it starts with first acknowledging that we're, we can get to that point. Um, if anything, that Psalm 51, when David was confessing his sin, was acknowledging that, you know, he was born in sin, so he had those tendencies. So that's, he is human, so he has those tendencies. But the second thing is, um, I've, I don't know where in the Bible it says that, but it, it says, by beholding, we become changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think having that constant um, um, presence of God and uh, constantly looking at Him, uh, you know, the Bible, you know, use it as a good, um, the book, let's say, to, 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 to keep on beholding the image of, of, of Christ and the things that He does so that we be can become changed. It's almost like every time you open up the Bible and you read about uh, the story of Jesus, you know, it chisels away this, um, our character is that, that, you know, we're born into sin, but now we're being transformed into the likeness of Christ. Yes. And fixing our eyes on Jesus, the yeah. author and finisher yeah. of our faith, yeah. which comes yeah. back to what Glennie, you said about that personal relationship, because ultimately it is that personal relationship with Christ yeah. that informs us mm -hmm. to stay, uh, skip buying that piece of clothing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We ought not to micromanage each other, you know, mm -hmm. uh, bypass that movie, right? Um, Bypass that invitation to that party. Mm -hmm. um, allowing the Holy Spirit to say, You're, I want you to be distinctive mm -hmm. to declare my praises in, in the world in which you're living. Sabina? I'm thinking also, Pastor Derek, about the importance of developing good habits. Mm -hmm. You know, our nature is inclined to things that are not always the best things, right? So including our devotional, which is prayer, spending time in the Word of God, but also good habits like, you know, exercising, drinking water, staying outside in nature, all those things, they contribute for we not to drone away from, from God's purpose and meaning for our lives. So Beautiful. more than just something super big, that will be one key event in your life. I think you need to develop good habits yeah. habitually, like daily come to God mm. and do what's good. So I want to close in our last section. This covenant relationship is not just to save us or to bless others. It's actually inviting us into the family of God. Mm -hmm. It's really, I know you said we don't have kings and queens as our ancestors, and that may be true. We were born in sin, slaves and whatever, but we're invited into the family of God. Let's look at a few Bible verses that capture that uh, beautiful promise. And I'm gonna ask Lenny if you'd read the first one for us in Deuteronomy 8 and verse five. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. You see the family language there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about Deuteronomy 14 and verse 1? Billy, if you have that, would read it for us. Deuteronomy 14 and verse 1. 
Okay, I'll be reading from the NIV. You are the children of the Lord your God. Do not cut yourselves or shave the, f or shave the front of your heads for the dead. Mm. So again, but that's interesting. It got specific too, didn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, and people today, of course, cut themselves, you know, self-mutilation for all kinds of reasons, don't they? Yes. Some because mm -hmm. of pain on the inside, but other because of occult practices. And he's saying, don't do that. Don't. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the priests of Baal? When mm -hmm. Elijah's praying, they're cutting Oof. themselves Oof. with knives. He says, don't do that. What about uh, Deuteronomy 32, Stephanie, and verse 6? The New King James Version says, Do you thus deal with the Lord, O foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father who bought you? Has he not made you and established you? So you hear words like father, children. Mm -hmm. Does that remind you of, of, of any words of Jesus? Uh, speaking about not just, hey, we've got a contract, I'll save you if you trust me as your savior, but mm -hmm. uh, being, being part of, of a family together. Mm -hmm. Anybody think of any New Testament references? Well, let's take a look at a few together. John chapter 20 and verse 17. John 20 and verse 17. Stephanie, looks like you have sure. that. And the New King James Version says, Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Where's the family language there? <laughs> Father. It's all over Father. it, isn't it? Yes. Tell my brethren, my Father, your Father. Mm -hmm. It's all there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What about Matthew 28 mm -hmm. and verse 10? Lenny, could you read that for us? Matthew 28 and verse 10. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Hmm. By the way, these are the ones who have all been hiding, uh, but he ha and fighting over who will be the greatest before everything fell apart. But he still calls them? Brethren. brethren. My brothers. All right, brothers. one last, John 14, 23. This one's my favorite, Travis. John 14, 23, how does it read? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. <laughs> Is that beautiful? Mm -hmm. We will come to him and make our home with him. Mm -hmm. So there is that family language, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That we're invited to be part of the family of God. Well, that's not just in the words of Jesus. As we close, we're going to look at two last verses. Jonathan, it's one that we've quoted in 1 Peter 2.9, but I'd like you to read it. I think you have the English Standard Version there. 1 Peter 2.9. Um, let's hear what the Apostle Peter under inspiration says. All right. Uh, it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Mm -hmm. uh, that was interesting language. A people of his possession. Is that what it said? Mm -hmm. It's like, I guess I would say in my language, a people Purchase. who belong to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or we might say, those are my people, yeah. right? Yeah. Those are my people. It's very much family language. And uh, Nicole, could you read First John 3, verses 1 to 3? Uh, it's saturated not just uh, there in Deuteronomy, but throughout Scripture, that this new covenant, this everlasting covenant relationship is, is more than just a legal contract. I'll save you, you trust me. It's being part of his family. Mm. The New International Version says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. <laughs> and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Well, that's interesting because that answers the question, how does knowing that we're part of the family affect the way we live? And you got it in that last phrase, didn't you? 
Yes. Holy living, right? Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. honor God. But let's talk about how do you feel, um, Sabina? Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Sp Spirit looks down and says, there's my daughter, Sabina. Pastor Derek, I feel loved. <laughs> I feel very much loved. Mm. Yeah. Billy, what's it do for you? How, do, how does it, w when you realize it's more than just like a, a negotiation agreement, but it's actually really being adopted into the family of God? Yeah, it feels very genuine because I think in my life I've met a lot of people who are not genuine. They'll say something but actually don't mean it. But you see that you know the purpose of God saving us is not so that you know we can populate heaven, but it's because He wants us to be mm. part of His family. He wants, He wow. wants us as His own, not for wanted uh, other purposes, but to be uh, um, His family. Mm -hmm. Stephanie. Yeah, I think it places value and it gives purpose that the world does not have. It mm. cannot give us. Mm. Mm -hmm. Only the blood of Jesus can give us that eternal value. Eternal value. Uh, this covenant relationship and Moses is saying on the border of the promised land, don't forget mm -hmm. the God who saved you. Mm -hmm. Don't forget your creator and your redeemer. Yeah. And that's a powerful lesson for us today. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to appeal to you. There's so much more we're going to learn in our journey. Present truth in Deuteronomy. But I would appeal to you, don't forget what God has revealed. Don't forget what He's shown you, not just in your life, as important as that is, but what He's shown you through His Holy Word. Don't forget how precious you are to Him and how much He wants to spend eternity with you. Mm. It's, you're not just there to populate heaven. <laughs> he loves you and wants to spend eternity with you. Mm. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we stand in awe because we live in a world that discards people that are no longer useful. We mm -hmm. live in a world that wants you to fit a certain mold or you're not accepted. But you're welcoming us because we're your precious mm -hmm. children. You love us with an everlasting love. And, and yes, you have a purpose for us too, to share the truth about you with those around us. We want to just accept your love and rest in your family. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. Oh, you are a daughter, a son of the King. Hallelujah, my favorite word. Go out and share that good news with those around you.